So we've got these strange things called inductors, typically wire loops, usually with a bit of iron inside, and they are like political reactionaries. If you don't try and change anything, they have no effect. But as soon as you try and change anything, increase the current or decrease the current, they will fight you every inch of the way. If you try and increase the current, they will develop a voltage to stop you. If you try and decrease the current, they will then develop a voltage to try and keep it going. They don't like change. So this video will ask, how do these things work in a circuit? Well, let's start off with a circuit with a just an inductor and a resistor. So it's very simple. So let's say we have a battery with some voltage V. And then we have a switch we can open and shut. Then we have a resistor R. Then we have an inductor, inductance L. And then back to where we started from. And let's say we flip the switch, close the switch, and the current starts to flow. So what's going to happen? So we've closed the switch here. And we're going to get some current I that's flowing through the system. What is this current? OK, so let's think about this. We can do the normal voltage rule. As you go around the circuit, the sum of voltages must be zero. That still works even in the presence of this curly electric field, as long as we allow for the EMF produced by the inductor. So we've got a voltage V when you go from there to there. Then you take off I times R. That's how much the EMF drops, the voltage drops, potential drops as you go across the resistor. And then it drops here because as you've just closed it, the current is just starting up. So the uh, current starts up, it's trying to increase, therefore the inductor is going to try and fight you and oppose that by giving a backwards voltage. And that backwards voltage is going to be minus L di by dt. So minus the inductance times the rate of change of the current. And that, as you've gone completely around a circle, must come to zero. So that's a fundamental equation, and that is a differential equation. So it's an equation which has calculus things in it, differential things. It's got a di by dt and an i in it. Now we'll learn how to solve differential equations in great detail in second year maths, but for the moment we will cheat and use Mathematica. So here's Mathematica. The command for solving differential equations is D solve, capital D, capital S. And what you have to do is put down the equation you're going to solve in here and then tell it what you're trying to solve it for. So in this case, our equation, V minus IR minus LDI by DT, we can't use I as our variable for current in Mathematica because it uses it for something else. So let's call that um, C for current. So we've got V minus R space. And now we've got, we'll call it the current as a function of time, minus the inductance space. Now current with a little dash at the top means the rate of change of current in mathematics speak. Also a function of t, all equal to zero. There has to be two equals in Mathematica for something like that. So that's our equation. We want to solve for the current as a function of time. And the variable that everything is depending on is time. OK, and what do we get? OK, so we get the current as a function of time is going to be equal to V over R plus e to the minus R over LT times some constant. Now, what is that constant? When we first start things off, there's the current hasn't had a chance to start. So we need at time zero that the current will be zero. E to the minus zero is one. So we need that V over R plus one times the constant equals zero. So constant is minus V over R. So what that tells us is that the equation is actually I, we can go back to using I for current now equals V over R 1 minus 
e to the minus r over l times time. And that is what's happening here. What does it look like? Well, we can plot something like that in Mathematica again. So let's plot. So we'll have, I'll call V over R1, just for the purposes of this plot. So it's 1 minus exponential, and we'll call R over L1 as well. So minus T. And we'll plot T from 0 to 3, say, over that range. And press Shift Enter to run that. And we get something like this. So the current starts off as 0, and to begin with increases quite quickly. But as time goes, it's, but it doesn't increase instantaneously because the inductor is fighting it off. And eventually it plateaus out as 1. If you put the constants back, and it plateaus out at r, uh, v over r. So what's happening is as it as it the current increases, um, you're getting more and more voltage drop across the resistor. So to begin with, there's almost no voltage drop across the resistor because the current is very small. So all that's happening is your voltage here is being opposed by the voltage generated by the inductor. So this is fighting back as fast as it can, so the equation just has this bit removed. So it's increasing as fast as it can, but as the current ramps up and up, you more and more voltage drop across here, which means there's less and less voltage drop to force a current through there, so the rate of increase slows down, until eventually it plateaus out. The, the current stops moving, at which point this disappears. The inductor has no effect once everything's in a steady state, so you've just got the voltage from the battery battling the resistance of the resistor. So it's as if in steady state, nothing happens. So all that happens, well, the effect of the inductor is it slows down what would otherwise happen almost instantaneously. It means that the, it takes a while for the voltage to reach, the current to reach V over R, rather than happening instantaneously, but eventually it'll get there, at which point the inductor has no effect. As you'd imagine, as something that only slows things down and opposes change, but doesn't actually change the standard value of anything.